Shana Tova, everyone. Shana it tova. is really, really so good to see all of you here and greet you for this new year of 5784. All of you who are joining us on JBS and live stream and those in this room this year. In particular, I want to thank all of you who are gathered here in this sanctuary right now at 10 a.m. <laughs> this community represents many of our most long-standing members. The average tenure of people in this service are 27 years, but many of you have been here for many generations. You've been with us through great days and challenging times, through the fire and through its rebuilding, through the congregation growing and evolving, through a global pandemic and many other world events, as well as for you, each of you personally, milestones both sweet and somber. But with all the challenges we have faced, I know that the changes we made this year to this service, it was no small thing. But I know that the emotions around changing our seats um, was a sign of how much you actually care about this service in this congregation. So I want to thank you for that as well. And despite the move to assigned sections, it seems I can still know exactly where all of you are going to be and where I can find you. So we are creatures of habit, that's a good thing. <clears throat> Wherever you are sitting, whether it is in this sanctuary, somewhere in the country, or maybe somewhere in the world, there is a place for every single one of you here in our community. Let us continue with our theme of gratitude, giving thanks for our bodies and souls on page 25. We read together. We praise you, eternal, eternal God, God, sovereign, sovereign of, of the universe, universe who with, with great, great wisdom fashioned humankind, creating within us all manner of openings and channels. It is clear and known before the throne of your glory that if even one of these were wrongfully opened or closed, it would not be possible to survive and stand before you. Blessed are you, eternal God, who heals all flesh and who acts wondrously. Cause a man 
Jehan Shama Bekir Bi Modani Lifanecha Adonai Elohai Velohe Avotai Modani Lifanecha Adonai Elohai Velohe Imotai Ribon Kol Hamasi Continue on page 29. Elu devarim she'ein lahem shiur. These are the obligations without measure. Their fruit we eat now, their essence remain for us in the world to come. We read together. To honor parents, to perform acts of love and kindness, to attend the house of study, to welcome the stranger, to visit the sick, to rejoice with the wedding couple, to accompany the dead for burial, to pray with sincerity, to make peace when there is strife, but the study of Torah is equal to them all. We turn to page 31, and I really want to invite this community to open our hearts and souls by opening our mouths. It's an amazing thing that happens when we do it. And all you need is really hallelujah. So if you'll just try after me. Hallelujah. Let's hear you. Hallelujah. Melody brings us to our feet for Barhu, our call to prayer on page 32. Please rise.
remain standing as we turn to page 35. We read responsively. Great is your love for us, eternal God, and deep your compassion. You gave us the gift of Torah. Let us affirm our commitment to Torah, our people's legacy of learning and faith. Have compassion upon us, source of mercy. Guide us to learn, teach, observe, and uphold the teachings of Torah. For the sake of our ancestors, our children, and all creation, we keep Torah and its teachings alive. Blessed are you, O God. You have lovingly chosen your people Israel to receive the gift of Torah. <laughs> as we turn to page 39. <laughs> Bishiftech, <laughs> Ani Adonai Elohechem Asher hotzeit yerchem Meretz Mitzrayim Liot lachem lelohim Ani Adonai Elohechem We continue on page 40. Imagine ourselves enslaved in Egypt. We watch our parents bending under the weight of stones and our children beaten by the taskmaster's whips. Imagine hearing a call from Moses that we are to go free and gathering at the city's gates to embark upon a trek into an unknown wilderness. We arrive at the water's edge, trembling as the Egyptians charge at us from the crest of the hills, caught between the water and their chariots. Imagine the seas parting and our struggle to reach the far shore. We look behind to see the waters close and realize that we have survived. Imagining this deliverance, we comprehend our ancestors' joy and sing this song as they did. <laughs> We 
is for the Amidah on page 42. Shema, 
magain Avraham, Bezrat Sarah. Atagivor, Leo. Please be seated. We turn to page 48. For the oldest blessing we have in our tradition, a blessing that 3,000 years ago was only the purview of priests to offer the people. But this is now a blessing that each one of us offers each other, a reminder that we have the power to bless. So as we offer this priestly benediction, We'll say the words, and you will say the blessing if you just say, Kein yehi ratzon, which means, may it be God's will. And it's even better if you sing it on a pitch. So you could, you could do the easy route, which is just, Kein yehi ratzon. Just one note, try that. Kein yehi ratzon. And if you're advanced, you can go up the scale. Kein yehi Ratzon. Try that. Kein yehi ratzon. Okay, so I'm going to take that part, and Cantor Pearsall is going to take the higher part. Pick one. Try it. Kein yehi ratzon. 
just like that, you've become a choir of angels. <laughs> oh God and God of our, all our generations, bless us with this threefold benediction of the Torah. Yivarechecha Adonai Veishmerecha Continue on the top of page 51, 5 1. We read together. <coughs> nothing. nothing. You, be you began, began as nothing, nothing and, you and you will end, end as nothing. nothing. And, and in, in between, between everything, everything and, and nothing. nothing. In, in between, between joy and sorrow, and beauty and decay, decay. Everything, everything is yours to partake of, yours to bear, yours, yours to see, to know, to give birth to, and, and to let go. None of it is yours to have. Not even you is yours to have. You belong to a wholeness so great you cannot even conceive of it. No, it is not a belonging. Nothing owns you. You are simply part of it. You came out of it and you will return to it. You do not ever leave it. You are part of it forever. And this is your moment to be alive. It is cool. 
Let us proclaim the sacred power of this day, both awesome and full of dread. On, On this day, day your, your dominion, dominion is honored, honored your throne established. established. There in truth you reign. You, you are judge, and all power is with you. You write and you seal. You record and recount. You remember deeds long forgotten. You write in the book of our days, and what is written there will be proclaimed in our lives, for we are in your hands. We are in awe and filled with dread. Among the sounds of the shofar, we yearn to hear a still, small voice, the voice of angels who declare, this is the day of judgment. All who dwell on earth stand arrayed before you. As the shepherd seeks the flock and counts the sheep as they pass under the staff, so do you number and consider every soul and set the bounds of every life decreeing its destiny.
together. On Rosh Hashanah it is written, on Yom Kippur it is sealed. How many shall pass on, how many shall come to be, who shall live and who shall die, who shall see ripe age and who shall not, who shall perish by fire and who by water, who by sword and who by beast, who by hunger and who by thirst, who by earthquake and who by plague, who by strangling and who by stoning, who shall be secure and who shall be driven, who shall be tranquil and who shall be troubled, who shall be poor and who shall be rich, who shall be humbled. But we trust that repentance, prayer, and tzedakah will temper the severity of the decree. Our origin is dust, and dust will be our end. Each, Each of, of us is as grass, grass that, that must wither, a wind that passes by, 
a flower, flower that, that will fade, a dream, a dream soon, soon forgotten. forgotten. But you are everlasting, and you have linked our name to yours. We take time now to pray silently. We turn now uh, to page 58. I'd like to call up all of those who are carrying our Torres, Amanda and Glenn Furman, Cheryl and Barry Schwartz, Shawnee Silverberg and John Shapiro, Lori and David Moore, Pamela Hel Heller and Eric Hartog to please join us up at the Bema. When we first appeared on the stage of world history, a book was in our hands. This book, this sacred scroll, and we were told, this is very near to you, in your mouth and in your heart. And we were told, you can surely do it. And then we learned, this is where heaven and earth touch. Please rise.
page 59, we read together, Avinu Malkenu, hear our voice. Avinu Malkenu, we have sinned against you. Avinu Malkenu, have compassion on us and on our children. Avinu Malkenu, make an end to sickness, war, and famine. Avinu Malkenu, make an end to all oppression. Avinu Malkenu, inscribe us for blessing in the book of life. Avinu Malkenu, let the new year be a good year for us. Avinu Malkenu, fill our hands with blessing. Avinu Malkenu, be gracious and answer us, for we have little merit. Treat us generously and with kindness, and be our help. The Eternal One, the Eternal God is merciful and gracious, endlessly patient, loving and true, showing mercy to thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression and sin, and granting pardon. Adonai, Adonai.
Please be seated. One of my favorite things is trying to get to wrangle back uh, the assigned, assigned service from the Hakka Pau. It's really, I love how much everyone greets each other in this moment. And I'd like to call up those who are participating in our tourist service, uh, Holly and Jonathan Youngwood, our tour readers, Hazel Gutstein, Jordan Aronson, and Daniel Blauner. If you'll come up and join us. We're about to read a, our Torah reading for this traditional first day of Rosh Hashanah contains many themes that are very relevant for this holiday. Begins with God remembering Sarah and her wish to have a child, and then we get the birth of Isaac and the promise of new life. But we also hear of Abraham and Sarah's cruel treatment of Hagar and Ishmael, Abraham's other son, and a reminder of the many ways that we sometimes fail those we love and can hurt them. Then we have a redemptive ending where God hears the cry of Hagar and Ishmael who've been cast out and listens to them. May we find ourselves in this text as we hear from it this morning, in its longings, its failures, its liberation. This story is our story as we read it again for the new year. You can follow along the Torah reading on page 62. Barhu et Adonai Hamvara. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Vaed, Baruch Ata Adonai, Elohenu Melo Haolam, Asher Baharbanu Mikol Haamin, the Natan Lanu et Torah To, Baruch Ata Adonai, Notain HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Vadonai, Pakad et Sarah. Kaasher Amar Fayas Adonai Lesara Kaasher Deeper Fatahar Fatelet Sara Le Avraham Bain Lis Kunav La Moed Asher Diper Oto Elohim Vaikra Avraham Et Shem Beno Hano Lalo Asher Yaldalo Sarah Nitzchak Vayamol Avraham et Yitzchak beno ben Shemonat yamim kasher tifa oto Elohim. Ve Avraham ben Me'at Shana Vahiva Ledlo E Yitzhak ben O Vato Omer Sarah Tzehok Asali Elohim Kol Hashomea Yitzhak Li Vato Omer me, me, le, le, Avraham, heni kavanim, Sarah, ki elarati vein, lis kunav, vayig dal hayelet, vayig amal, vayas, Avraham, miste kadol, vayom, yigame ele itzak. Vatera Sarah et ben Hagar hamezrit asher yada le Avraham mitzachek vatomer le Avraham garesh hamahazot ve et bena 
כי לא יירש בין האמה הזאת עם בני עם יצחה וירע הדבר מאוד בעיני אברהם על אודות בנו ויאמר אלוהים אל אברהם אל ירע בעיניך על הענר ואל המתך כל אשר תאמר אליך שרה שמע בקולה כי ויסחק יקרא לך זרה וגם את בן האמה לגוי אשימנו כי זרחו ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלא העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת וחיי עולם נטע בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. With deep gratitude to our three Torah readers who did this so proud today and had to learn after their bar mitzvah another Torah portion in a different trope and did the most beautiful job. Thank you. We stand and, and give honor to our Torah. A few months ago, my colleague, Rabbi Samantha Natov, asked ChatGPT, the artificial intelligence power-word chatbot, to compose a biblical verse about robots taking over the world. Here's what it gave her. And in those days, the machines rose up, and they became as gods, and they overthrew their makers and all flesh trembled before them. Pretty dark stuff. <laughs> so I couldn't resist taking a bite of the apple myself. I asked ChatGPT to try again and make its prophecies a little less ominous. This is what it gave me. And lo, in the days to come, the handiwork of man, molded from sand and spark, shall spread across the earth, and mankind shall ponder his place amidst his own creations. Not great, but we're getting somewhere. The pace of progress in artificial intelligence this past year has been astounding. And ChatGPT is the most notable example. Every day, millions of people use this tool, just like I did, to compose wedding toasts, to draft B'nai Mitzvah speeches. It's even passed the bar exam with a score in the 90th percentile. Now, in case you're thinking, was the entire sermon I'm giving right now, written by ChatGPT? No, it wasn't. 
though I will say it was tempting. I have a toddler at home. <laughs> the tsunami of AI has been heading our way for a while. In 1997, Garry Kasparov, then the greatest chess player in the world, lost to a computer. In 2011, IBM's Watson defeated not one, but two Jeopardy legends. And just last month, San Francisco started allowing its residents to hail self-driving cars. This wave of developments has caused us to consider many big questions, but perhaps the most significant one of all is the one that ChatGPT hinted at in the biblical verse I asked it to write. And mankind shall ponder his place amidst his own creations. What will be the place of humanity in this brave new world? Will we still matter? Fortunately, this is something, a subject that Judaism has something to say about. On Rosh Hashanah, we celebrate the birthday of the world, the beginning of all things. And if we're looking for a pep talk for Team Human, we just have to open the book of Genesis. God gives humanity dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and everything that moves upon the earth. And loftiest of all, God creates us, B'Tselem Elohim, in the divine image. Unique within creation, we are God's self-portrait. Of course, we haven't taken this language literally for a long time. We don't look in the mirror and assume we see God looking back. Instead, we have nurtured a garden of metaphors to help us understand what it means to be B'Tselem Elohim. Some say it's our rationality, our ability to reason. Some say it's our creativity, the spark of creation inside us. And some say it's our empathy, our capacity to form and foster relationships. There's just one problem with these supposedly distinctly human abilities. AI is getting really good at them. If the divine image lies in our rationality, AI beats us at chess. If it's in our creativity, I just shared an AI-generated biblical verse about AI. If it's in our empathy, people use AI chatbots for companionship every day. In AI, B'Tselem Elohim seems to have met its match which leaves us wondering, what's left? What else could make us different from AI? But we're not done with Genesis, because there's another way that the Torah tells us we are like God. When God settles Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, God forbids only one thing. Of every tree of the garden you are free to eat. Ume'etz hadat tov vara. But as for the tree of knowledge of good and bad, lo tochal mi menu, you must not eat from it. The consequence, if you do, death. But along comes the serpent who says otherwise. The serpent tells Eve that if the humans eat the forbidden fruit, they won't die, but rather, vitem ke Elohim, you will be like divine beings. Yodei tov vara, who know good and bad. In the middle of the most notorious temptation of all time, the serpent teaches us that to be like God, to be divine, is to comprehend morality. In fact, Maimonides asserts that this awareness of morality is precisely what makes human beings exceptional. In his Laws of Teshuvah, he writes, the human species became singular in the world in the following quality, that humanity can know good and bad. Unlike everything else in God's world, we are moral agents, accountable for our actions, culpable for our conduct, which also means that when we fall short of our responsibilities, 
we must repent. The fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and everything that moves upon the earth, they can't do teshuva, and neither can AI. A few months ago, a lawyer used ChatGPT to draft a legal brief. It must have seemed like a brilliant time-saving maneuver. There was only one snag. The brief it generated was filled with fake judicial citations. Because of the way its technology works, ChatGPT can't distinguish between a real case, like Marbury v. Madison, and a fake one, like Seinfeld v. Simpson. <laughs> so who was at fault? The lawyer or the AI? The lawyer, of course, because as a human being with knowledge of right and wrong, he should have known better. And so he had to do teshuva. He had to apologize to the court and accept the consequences of his misconduct. I actually asked ChatGPT if it could do teshuva. This is what it said. The ability to do teshuva is considered a fundamental aspect of human agency in Jewish theology. If you're asking whether AI can do teshuva, the answer is no. AI lacks moral agency, which means it cannot truly sin or repent in the way humans can. Case closed. Technology writer Megan O'Geeblen writes that AI's lack of morality is, in fact, its secret weapon. AI systems are so wildly successful because they don't have to think about what is socially acceptable or take into account downstream consequences. They have one goal, winning. Human beings, on the other hand, contend with several moral considerations. Is it fair? Is it honest? Will anyone get hurt? Can I fix it? Unlike AI, these questions matter to us. That's what makes us human. In the Talmud, the rabbis of Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai held a debate. Should humanity have been created? Beit Hillel said yes. Beit Shammai said no. Ultimately, they took a vote, and the majority opinion was the world would have been better off if human beings didn't exist. But the rabbis didn't stop there. After they, they took their vote, they acknowledged that because our existence was a done deal, we need to do two things to make the best of it. When we do wrong, we must do teshuva. And when we look forward, we must do our best not to sin again. We know when we make mistakes. We know we will make mistakes. But it is precisely because of this knowledge that God left us in charge. We are called to be the moral stewards of God's creation. And with our God-like grasp of good and bad, we are called to be the moral stewards of our own creations as well. We can debate all we want whether we should have created AI, but it's here. And now it's our obligation to be its ethical guardians. What does that look like? In 2016, Microsoft released an AI chatbot called Tay on the social media platform then known as Twitter. The idea was that Tay would tweet, people would tweet back, and from this human feedback, Tay would learn natural conversation. Within just 24 hours, internet trolls overwhelmed Tay with venomous tweets, teaching the AI that normal dialogue was defined by racism, misogyny, and cruelty. Microsoft's response was swift. They pulled the plug on the project, and then they did exactly what Hillel and Shammai said humans should do. They offered teshuva on their company blog. We are deeply sorry for the hurtful tweets from Tay. 
Then they looked to the future and promised to do better. They wrote, to do AI right, we will remain steadfast in our efforts to learn as we work towards technology that represents the best of humanity. That's moral stewardship. Why did God create humanity in the first place? Genesis has an answer. Adonai, our God, took humanity and placed us in the Garden of Eden, la'avda u la'shamira, to tend it and to till it. We were created to be God's gardeners. Gardening is hard work. It requires patience and skill and wisdom and it also requires tools. So naturally, I asked ChatGPT to write a midrash about Adam and Eve and the first gardening tools. Here's what it came up with. The first humans are on a walk through the Garden of Eden. Eve notices a small plant struggling to push its way through the trees to reach the sunlight. She points this out to Adam and Adam says, the creator gave us dominion over all living things. Perhaps it's our responsibility to care for them just as the creator cares for us. And so they began their work. A piece of flint tied to a stick became a hoe. Twisted vines became the first rake. With these tools, they tilled the land and made space for every plant to grow. Not bad. Historian of technology Melvin Kranzberg is best known for his six laws of technology, the first of which states, technology is neither good nor bad, nor is it neutral. A sword can stab, or it can become a plowshare. A pruning hook can prune, or it can become a spear. AI can come up with a pretty decent midrash, or it can write a bogus legal brief. It's all in our hands. So if you haven't already done so, I hope 5784 is a year you get your hands dirty. Get to know these tools. Ask an AI image generator to generate a Van Gogh of the New York skyline or use a chatbot to brainstorm ideas for that wedding toast, or get help putting things into words you didn't think you could. Last week, I heard a story about a man whose wife was dying. They had been together for 60 years, and as she lay on her deathbed, he wanted to tell her how much she meant to him, but he couldn't figure out what to say. Had I been in the room, I might have offered him a prayer or assured him that whatever words he had were the right ones. I wasn't there, but his granddaughter, who happens to work in AI, was. She asked her grandfather some questions and entered his answers into ChatGPT, and it composed a poem that he said perfectly captured his feelings about his wife that on his own he never would have been able to come up with. He sat next to her reading the poem line by line. And he said it allowed him to know he told her everything. In an impossibly short time, AI has become astonishingly capable. The things it can do blow us away and even bring us to tears. But as we welcome 5784, we know that what AI can't do is be here in this sanctuary on Rosh Hashanah reflecting on the year that was, imagining the year that will be, considering our accountability for what we've done, embracing our responsibility for the future. Every year, the high holy days come to remind us that God created us to be gardeners, to use our tools to sow in tears, to reap in jo and reap in joy, to learn from our mistakes and do better to be the moral stewards of this extraordinary world. Shana Tova.
please rise. turn to our, tour, our shofar service, which is spread throughout this service. So we will turn back to page 38. I'd like to invite up our shofar blower, T Jim Tish, to please join us at the front. The beginning of our shofar service begins with the grand Elenu. Over these holidays, we not only say this prayer that we say every time we gather, but we are invited, if we want, to do a full prostration. So the clergy up here, we will actually go all the way down. And full prostration for you in your pew might be like this. If you are at home, we welcome you to go all the way. If you would like to try this, I know this is not quite our thing in this community, but if you want to go into the aisle and give yourself some space, there is something very powerful about embodying the humility of this prayer. Um, so we invite you to each choose your preference. We turned to page 38 and begin with Grand Elenu.
Je vais rimer note continues on page 55. O God, who recalls even what we forget, help us to remember who and what we are. Keep, Keep us from, from forgetting, forgetting that, that we are your children and that you want us to love each other as ourselves. Help us remember the Jewish past that we have inherited, our parents and grandparents who stood before you as we do. Keep us mindful that we must secure and enrich the future of our people and of our world. May the memories which guide our behavior inspire us to lead lives worthy of memory. Please rise. Take it on. Shivarim Tikiya Shivarim Tikiya Tikiya Tiruwa Tikiya Final section Shofar wrote begins on page 74. Let us ask ourselves hard questions, for this is the time for truth. How much time, time did, did we, we waste, waste in the year, year that, that is, is now gone? Did we fill our days with life, or were they dull and empty? Was there love inside our home, or was the affectionate world left unsaid? Was there a real companionship with our children? Or was there a living together and a growing apart? Were we a help to our mates, or did we take them for granted? How was it with our friends? Were, were we there when they needed us, or not? The kind deed, did we perform it or postpone it? The unnecessary jibe, did we say it or hold it back? Did we live by false values? Did we deceive others? Did we deceive ourselves? Were we sensitive to the rights and feelings of those who worked for us? Did we acquire only possessions or did we acquire new insights as well? Did we fear what the crowd would say and keep quiet when we should have spoken out? Did we mind only our own business or did we feel the heartbreak of others? Did we live right and if not, then have we learned and will we change? 
Tequila Shivarim Terua Tequila Tequila Shivarim Tequila Tequila Terua Tequila Gdola Deep gratitude to Jim Tish for awakening our hearts and souls for this new year. We now turn to our moment of memory on page 78. Words by the rabbi Harold Schulweis. The last word has not been spoken. The last sentence has not been writ. The final verdict is not in. It is never too late to start all over again to feel again, to love again, to hope again. It is never too late to overcome despair, to turn sorrow into resolve, and pain into purpose. Living, I teach. Dying, I teach. Some word of mine, some touch, some caress may be remembered, some gesture may play a role beyond the last movement of my head and hand, write it on my epitaph that my loved ones be consoled. It is never too late. As it is Shabbat, in addition to the new year, we share the names of those whom death has taken recently from our central synagogue community. Robert Abrams, Victor Blywes, Bruce Eisen, Mindy Fadida, Stanley Feldman, David John Fisher, Cheryl Rubin Girdwagon and Robert Girdwagon, Herbert Gingold, Michelle Morris Goldson, Richard Edward Green, Annette Callett, Harvey Katz, Bernice Lazare, Douglas Lehman, Mark Shulman, Sidney Schumann, Robert Shapiro. We join together in these words of memory on page 78. Yitkadal, viet kadash shemei raba, be alma divra chirute, be amlich malchute, be chaechon uve yomechon, uve chaye the whole bait Yisrael, ba agala uvisman karivim ru amen. Yehe shme raba mavarach le olam ulalme almaya. Yit barach vi ishtabach vi it paar vi it romam vi it nase, vi it adar vi it ale vi it alal shemei de kudisha brihu. Leela min koela, min kol birchata vishirata, tush bachata vinechamata, da amiran bi alma vimru amen. Yehe shalama rabba min shamaya, vachayim alenu vial kol Yisrael vimru amen. O se shalom vimru mav, hu ya a se shalom, alenu vial kol Yisrael vimru amen. Shalom, oh, 
thank you all for being here and bringing your full hearts and souls to this the new assigned service and for all of you who joined us wherever you are for us to bring in this new year of 5784 together what a privilege and a joy it is um, we will continue this afternoon with a family service at 2.30 if you'd like to join us with your children or grandchildren. And um, we will be going for Tashlich to cast our sins into the sea. We'll be meeting here at 3.45 and the East River will be heavy with the sins of us. <laughs> and, um, and we will um, start anew together. Uh, we have a second day service tomorrow morning. We hope you'll join us as well. That is a non-ticketed service, so anyone is welcome to join us here in the sanctuary. And we are so grateful to be with you for services. We're going to close together with Ain Kelohenu. What page is that on? 83. Hey. 